Hello everyone. Look, I'm here to uh, now introduce a series of videos on the build of the Kelly. Um, absolutely beautiful ship. And you see them around the place because Dean's Marine have been spitting these out. I think there's another model as well. But anyway, basically the Dean's Marine is the best. Although I have to say, I've found some issues with it. So, it's a beautiful model. Have a look at this. Everything about this ship is, is gorgeous in my view. And it's partly because I grew up with it. You know, I was watching in which we served when I was a little kid and fell in love with the whole with the whole thing. But the story of this ship, uh, ironically, involves it being sunk. So there's a chap in my club who uh, purchased the kit, built it up, and as he did so, he painted it in, in uh, wartime colours, so it's fairly dark. And there's a lot of people in my club, and one of them has a rather large motor torpedo boat. You can tell what's coming up here. So he went sailing out with his Kelly, dark, close to the water, and this other boat went straight over the top of it. And it was a disaster. It took off the stern superstructure, the water rushed in, and down it went, just like the real Kelly. So I watched this because, um, naturally enough, it was a major event. So we got the boat out, someone pulled the Kelly off the bottom, and the stern superstructure was gone. There was only one turret left. Uh, there was a lot of damage and the, the owner of the, of, the, of the Kelly was particularly upset, as you would imagine. Of course, the guy that ran over him didn't see him at all, so, you know, what, what do you say? So, um, a couple of months, or I think it was six months later, I saw this guy and I said, how are you going with the Kelly? And he said, oh, I'm not doing it, it's too hard, there's too many parts missing, I'm not going to do that. Now, to a scratch builder, this is an opportunity because you've got a, almost a complete boat instead of building a complete boat. And I've always wanted to build the Kelly, so away we went. I got, the, I got it for free and pulled it apart and then started to work on it. Now, one of the first things that I did was to find some resources. So one of the resources I got was this amazing plan that you can see here. This was, this was drawn in 1956. I was three years old. Wow. And it's the right scale and everything, and I absolutely, this has been very helpful. The second thing that I, I found was this book on the Kellys, and it's got some lovely pictures in there, and lots of information about the Kelly and what happened to her, plus all of her sister ships. Interesting thing was that the author of this book was not particularly happy with Lord Louis Mountbatten. He thought that the ship was in repair a lot, in the early part of the war and 50% of the times were his fault, in his view, anyway. But the real source of information comes from in which we serve. Absolutely wonderful opportunity to take shots out of the movie and, and study them and look at this. My eyes are. Aircraft in sight, bearing green 170, angle of sight 20. Short range weapons, aircraft in sight, starboard. Stand by for dive bombers. I show you the book and the plan because it's very important that you do research before you start any book, even if it's a model like this, which is a kit. The fact is, um, the kit is often not right, and this one certainly isn't. Now, when I looked at the model, the Dean's Marine model, I found mistakes right away. The first one is that the bow is, doesn't have a rake. It's just... And that's the beauty of this ship, is it's, you know, it's a little rake at the front and that makes it a destroyer. So I had to redo that. Then I redid all of the uh, portholes because they weren't right either. And I've re I, I, I went through a process of designing how to make portholes, which is quite an interesting one, and I think in the end it looks pretty good. So good, in fact, that I decided to put lights through the boat so it all shines through the portholes. Another issue was that the boat is too heavy. Dean's Marine have just done it the easy way, and a lot of the material that they have built into the superstructure is just white metal. 
and the, 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 the director towers right at the top of the superstructure are white metal, they weigh a ton. And I suddenly discovered that the boat was going to tip over and I realized that I had to do some pretty major work. You'll notice in the, in the videos that I talk about stripping back material. I did strip back material, but it wasn't enough. The, the, the Dean's Marine stuff is really deadly. You can't really add anything to it without thinking of other ways of fixing the problem. And you'll see how I did that probably in about the last video. But then take a look at this picture and see, and you see a lot of these pictures of these destroyers sailing away with their turrets in different directions. That could be just because of the way they set them or to do with the wind or to do with the fact that they were in a battle. But I decided I wanted turrets that would move, that would train and elevate. So I spent most of my time on this building the mechanism for that to work. And I think it's quite successful. It uses very cheap um, servos and the whole thing works very well. But the next step was to design some code for Arduino to manage it. Because what I wanted was turrets that would move very slowly. It's easy to get things to move fast in any model boating scene. I always go for things to move slowly. This does in every sense. And so the turrets come out and move very slowly isn't that beautiful? Very happy. I'd love them to fire something, but that's another layer of complication. I'm never ever going to get to in about that size, but at least it does that part really, really well. So after that, obviously I had to make the props because they, they're at the bottom of the pond. Um, I had to attach the power and all of the wiring for all of the bits and bobs. There's a lot of wires in that boat, I've got to say. The wiring diagram is on the on the web page so that you can see that plus the code that goes in the uh, Arduino and then finally I painted it in uh, pre-World War II lovely colors I don't want this to be run over by any other boat but it's got plenty of power and it really hammers along um, and I'm very happy with it overall so the whole journey of this boat and my build of the boat is about generating ideas coming up with things that you hadn't thought of before, and I certainly did with this boat. It just grew a life as it went. And it's all about scratch building, taking things and making stuff that you've never done before. This has been a really interesting uh, exercise. I, I build a lot of submarines, but I've got to say, this had a, a particular joy of it all of its own. Anyway, cheers.